I like to uh, do comics about uh, historical issues and especially about um, biographies of historical personalities. This was my very first book. It is about the history of a small Jewish community in the very north of Germany. Uh, this is a comic about two biographies of Jewish doctors from Germany who survived both the Shoah. This is an um, American magazine about several cities of the diaspora, the diaspora of the Jewish diaspora, and uh, for them I did a 17 uh, page this long comic about the first uh, female rabbi of the world who uh, worked in the 1930s and 40s in Berlin and was killed by the Nazis. And, uh, this is uh, the first part of a series I am doing with a German uh, Berlin-based editor, Reproduct. Um, it is called Die Andere Mendelssohns. The Mendelssohn family is a very uh, famous uh, Jew German Jewish family. family. They are the descendants of the philosopher Moses Mendelssohn. And uh, they are a family of um, artists and scholars and also bankers. The books, the series of books, is about the other Mendelssohns because they are the so-called black sheep of the family. For example, Dorothea Schlegel, she um, uh, gets uh, uh, get baptized uh, very early before other uh, family members did and, and she got divorced and she was living in a romantic writer's commune in the 18th century. <laughs> and uh, the other one, uh, Arnold Mendelssohn, he was a physician and he also was a revolutionary and he was in jail and was had to leave the country and so it was another different biography, uh, difficult biography. The book I am doing right now, this book um, came out in, uh, seven years ago and now I am working on the second issue. It is about Karl Mendelssohn Bartholdi. So I'm in the middle of this book, so you are kind of looking over my shoulder on my um, desk and I tell you out of my work uh, how I do the research for this biography and of course doing a biography is always an interpretation so it's always seeing his biography through my eyes. So Karl Mendelssohn Bartoli, he was the oldest son of the composer Felix Mendelssohn Bartoli and um, as he was losing his parents very early he was forced to live um, with his uncle, the banker, in Berlin. He wasn't happy there. He, he started to hate the Prussians, so uh, the, the uh, Prussian mentality, this uh, uh, like uh, militaristic and very strict and hiding emotions, and he grew to, to hate the Prussians, to hate Berlin, and to hate to be in Berlin, and he developed a strong love for the south of Germany, for liberalism and for democracy and revolution, which was, which was at that time uh, uh, not so usual. So as soon as possible he went south and after finishing, finishing his studies of uh, law, which was what his uncle wanted for him, he started what he really wanted to do, uh, studying history. He studied it and he became very successful even after his studies. He became very early a professor, pro professor at uh, uh, Freiburg University, also in the south of Germany. But um, at age of uh, 36, he became mentally ill. Um, his wife, Berta, she, she died giving birth to their first child, so he had a breakdown. And being after, uh, after being in a health resort for a while and working, working, working more, um, he had a second breakdown. Um, after his second wife, until he gave birth to a dead child. This time from the health resort, he went to a psychiatric hospital. It's in the city uh, Görlitz. It's uh, now on the, exactly on the border to Polonia, Skorzele. So I uh, tried to find out about this, this psychiatric hospital and uh, about the, the doctor he was with. It's, he was very famous at that time. It's uh, Karl Ludwig Karlbaum. And of course, there are several possibilities to do research on, on things. Of course, there's the internet for information and also for contacting people. Um, 
there are books and special libraries. There is a library for medical history in Berlin. And it's possible, of course, to, to look for and talk to people who know about things and people. So I talked to a psychologist and I talked to somebody who wrote about Khan and November Tolle before. And uh, there are uh, many other possibilities, of course, but I, I wanted to go there too. So I went there by train. It was an area with very many little buildings. So this is the entrance and I was allowed to go there. This is the main building. The hospital has several parts. There was a um, kind of uh, open health resort like there and a um, um, psychiatric, psychiatric clinic and uh, a, a medical educational department also. And they had everything there. They had a bowling alley and exotic birds to just to, for, for recreation to look at and parks and gardens. When building this hospital, Karl Baum wanted to have everywhere uh, windows two centimeters thick because he didn't like the undignifying um, uh, uh, bars uh, like uh, in jail. So he, he wanted to secure the people who are uh, uh, maybe aggressive or panicked. And, and he didn't want to put them behind bars. And that, that was uh, in the middle of the 19th century, I think. Here you see uh, Karl, a sketch of Karl. And uh, here is the doctor. Yeah. And this is a very important uh, person in the comic also. Uh, it, he's a male nurse. At that time, uh, hadn't been uh, an official education for that job. Uh -huh. so. And they were living with the patients in the hospital. So he was very close to Karl. And this is a very special pavilion where I, I, when I was there, and this doctor was with me, um, who worked there before. He told me this is uh, the pavilion where the, the beloved and news of uh, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Mina Herzli, uh, she was a patient of there in her last years. And this is the point where I um, had to stop because all research had to stop at one time. And I thought, okay, this is the story of Mina Herzli. And it was a very important decision for me, even, even to, to someday finish the book, to just say, research, research is over now, and I, I, have to, I have to start to plan and to draw. And I do two panels for you here, just to show how this um, uh, develops. from the book for you, and yes, maybe we have some questions. First thing is, I just, I just want to, I'm interested for my, just for myself, and maybe one uh, reason could be, uh, when I was a teenager, I was a fundamentalist Christian, and Jewish religion was very, very, very important for us, just, um, because Jesus was a Jew and God, God, uh, God chosen people, and I, I, I just distanced myself from that group. But I, I think that my, my interest and my my, my wish to to learn uh, remain. So, and I think it's uh, I want to also I want to tell this uh, because I think it's important to tell. So. This uh, you have in your hand is, is used in schools sometimes. Um, it's about uh, the history lessons. Yes, it was, uh, it was a study about how uh, comics work in school. And in Germany, there are big discussions about how comics work in school. And many people are talking about that at the moment, especially about history and, and, and uh, for democracy. Five years ago, uh, I. Um, met um, somebody who worked for the Institute for Human Rights. She was working on material for, for lessons, lessons about human rights. And uh, we just met and he told that I make comics for uh, lesson material. 
It was uh, great working with them also because they really told me their wishes. So mainly it's their knowledge and my drawings. Вы стараетесь отражать свою позицию, результаты ваших изысканий, или же некий редактор может прийти к вам и, скажем так, порекомендовать точку зрения, которую вы должны будете использовать в вашей работе. I can't remember anything like this. Maybe this situation um, doesn't happen because I'm very open with the way I work. I, I send sketches and we talk about uh, and and I tell how, whom I work with, who I ask for advice, and so I think um, before this point of change, this there is a lot of talk. On our exhibition, we have one of your works mm -hmm. about the. Um, uh, last lesbian who yes. was killed in the 18th century. Was it controversial? So yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you have any like, feedback about it? And where it was published? If it was published? It was published in an American literature online magazine called Words Without Borders. And um, they made, make, I think every year they make a, a June um, gay and lesbian issue. And they um, asked me to do something for them, and I was thinking to uh, myself, it was very open, the question. Before she was killed? It was because she was married to a woman and having sex with a woman. But what, uh, what uh, caused rage was also she was uh, wearing men's clothes and living a man's life, uh, which made her situation much better than before, because so she had the chance to have a job and to travel. And то есть это как вот тут в России там клавер девица была, да? Клавер девица. Бородино участвовала женщина. Катарина Маргарита Линкс said, I was not the only one. So maybe uh, there were many of them, I think so, but we, we don't know because they covered themselves so very good. And uh, I must add, in this case I did not the research. I, I read a fantastic book about the life of this woman and it was, writ was written uh, by a woman living in Cologne, in Germany, uh, I, I, I read the book and I, I wrote her an email and we were made <laughs> to and fro and she kindly allowed me to, to do this comic. And I asked her if she liked it before publishing and she liked it. Но в это же время были и мужчины тоже, не традиционной как бы ориентации. Вот их с ними что делали? Их тоже казнили? I don't know. I just don't know. I I I'm also reading about the situation like this. Women were doing that to get education, get free, or to be able to work or something like that. So it wasn't just lesbians who were doing it. And of course, men didn't want to dress as women for that reason. Спасибо большое, Эльке.